Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Closing Bell at MarketStream.Live. My name is Joseph Kuzik with the Kuzik Group Securities offered by MoneyBlock. This is where I just want to wrap up today's action. It was tight, to say the least. Uh, when you have your biggest drivers, Berkshire Hathaway, saying that their investment strategy of looking at railroads versus getting into the fangs, the Facebooks, the Apples, the Googles, the Netflix, Maybe they should have been looking at that more proactively. I don't know. Uh, but that was enough to get Apple on the move to the upside in large cap tech in general. But it definitely was not a catalyst for the general market or even tech for that matter. Um, also, Amazon's coming out, and this should be just record breaking that they're coming out with a new Echo. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, and you can hear my sarcasm in my voice, this is a tough market. And I think right now you have to temper your emotions and you have to stay focused. If you're looking at your portfolios, your 401ks, your IRAs, and so forth, what you're seeing is, is really good results. And that's what you should be walking away from and saying, okay. But uh, those results have been grinding and tempered for the last six months. Uh, there has been not a lot of, I would say, movement to the upside that has challenged what the perceived valuation is going in for the remainder of this year. And so with that being said, I think you watching this program, utilizing the tools and resources from MarketStream and taking a look at the opportunities there, it's going to change your perspective on your portfolio because other than your home, folks, that is the only thing that's going to get you past 65 years of age. Uh, and if you don't start paying attention to it and managing it like what we're trying to teach you here at MarketStream.Live, um, you're going to be working for a long time. And so we want to help you make sure that at the bare minimum, uh, that if you are going to continue to work past 65, which most of us are going to, um, let's make sure that that portfolio is, op is set up so that probabilistically and just statistically, you're going to meet the needs and goals that you want to achieve and need to achieve when you get to that point. Taking a look at today's action though, did nothing. The Dow Jones was up five points to 21,012. Now you can talk all you want until you're blue in the face about this 21,000 level, but right now it's a grind. Uh, right above it's to a 20 day and 50 day moving average. But at this juncture, unless we start to see some really big catalysts, and that's either through, because um, now we're at the tail end of earnings, either you see some economic data that was unforeseen and Right now, yes, great employment data, but we are not having wage inflation. We saw a similar uh, unemployment rate in 2007 at 4.4%, but we had wage inflation. We had uh, wages up three and a half percent. Today, they're only at 2.5%. They're a full percentage point lower than we were in 2007. You're seeing a new economy coming about, the service economy, and you're seeing lower paying jobs that are basically filling out those employment um, docs. So yeah, 4.4% is impressive, but when you're seeing 25% of that increase, decrease uh, due to the fact that we're getting these service-orientated, lower-paying jobs that are you know, filling those doles, well, the consumer is not going to be spending as much as they were. Um, that might be right, wrong, or indifferent, um, but it's not going to help the economy get to the next level. And those are the kind of numbers that are going to be focused on going in the future. Taking a look at the S&P 500, again, um, grinding today up 10 cents. Uh, it's still below that 2400 mark. It did challenge it for the day. You can see resistances there. Opportunities like selling some premium against your holdings, that's like a covered right. Or if you're looking to get into these markets at better levels, selling out of the money puts. Now, of course, you want to wait until you start seeing these opportunities arise where you're getting a higher probability of success. Or if you're putting that money to work or if your advisor is putting that money to work and after hearing this, you may ask them, are you using these strategies? Are you looking at this the same way? Um, this is where you can now start investing with a lower standard deviation of risk and a higher probability of potential success. Uh, taking a look at the NASDAQ, the news coming out of Berkshire Hathaway that they are they have made a more significant investment in Apple. That helped Apple. That helped also general tech. But it was only up 13 points at 56.59 in the NASDAQ 100. So while a catalyst, only good for a quarter of a percent to the upside for the net tech heavy index. The Russell 2000, not buying it. And this is what I call the canary in the coal mine. You've heard me say this a million times. If we don't start seeing economic data 
uh, that is really showing the potential for some accelerated growth, especially if we start getting any type of passage of some health care reform that's going to make sense, um, tax reform, who knows, or, or we just see general growth uh, through better PMIs, PPIs, CPIs. Um, at, the, at this juncture, um, the small caps are going to, if they start sliding to the downside, which they were the worst performing index today, that's an indication domestically that things may not be as rosy as um, we anticipated post-election and coming in after the first quarter. And it has been a solid first quarter, don't get me wrong. Um, but the market's not buying it. VIX also, 9.8 is, is where the VIX is at. We're in single digits. Um, again, you can harken back into the past and when you saw those kind of numbers. Uh, you know what? Hey, let's put up the monthly chart on volatility. Not that past uh, price history indicates anything, but boy, you're looking back in 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then 2009, you start seeing 7, here you go, 8, the financial crisis, and then after that pop, then it came back down. We're seeing volatility at levels that we haven't seen in over 11 years. Um, Bottom line is there is complete complacency in this marketplace at this juncture, and so everyone's waiting for that next um, catalyst, the upside. The dollar here in the States is not that catalyst. It firmed up today, uh, up 55 cents at 99, below that $100 mark, but it is above um, its 100-day moving average on a daily and above that $90, $90 mark on the long term. It's above on a monthly chart. So, but if you look at the shorter term, focus of um, the last, you know, on a daily chart, you're seeing that it is now trading at that um, 99 level. That's at resistance. Bull bears, uh, dollar bears, bulls uh, need to get above that 99 level, need to challenge and get above 100 if you're going to see some momentum in the dollar. That strength is going to help multinationals, um, specifically net exporters, uh, uh, foreign exporters. That's going to really help the likes of Japan. Uh, it's a catalyst that they think the Chinese are desperately looking for, as well as in Europe, specifically Germany, uh, would be a um, huge um, benefit benefactor of a stronger dollar. That's going to hurt us. That's The stronger buck right now is going to maybe stipe, um, uh, stagger growth a little bit, and we're going to watch that very closely. Crude oil today, uh, right off of where it basically um, opened today, up uh, down a penny at uh, 46.47. Uh, you're going to see crude be challenged here, um, especially since we have um, just a glut of surplus. I mean, we're well above our five-year average. And so the bottom line is, is until we start to see some major draws, and you'll see tomorrow afternoon the API data come out on storage, and then Wednesday you'll see the EIA report. That'll give us a better idea of what um, the storage components and the draws are looking like, especially now that we're getting into that spring and summer season. That's really going to be where if this consumer is strong, uh, if they are still spending, uh, it's going to show up in the crude markets. Uh, the, again, a stronger crude, that means potentially stronger economic strength, but it also means that we're paying more at the pumps. And if it's going down and it goes down as significantly as it has, we, we're talking about $50 crude, $52 crude uh, just a couple weeks ago, and now it's at 46 I mean, this is a big pullback. We have to look at this stuff pragmatically. And right now, these kind of moves are pretty big, especially in things like this commodity crude. And we see no volatility in the market. So uh, again, leaving you scratching your head, we did see though bonds. And bonds is that safe haven trade. That's where usually money will park if there's uncertainty. Bond prices pulled down. So that uncertainty quotient is not panning out either. So we're seeing basically static or flat markets, and we're seeing bond markets that are starting to unwind a little bit. I don't think that, that this bond story and upside in bond prices is quite over yet, but I think there's going to be challenges. Um, we'll watch that one very closely. All right, folks, that is it for the closing bell. It was an interesting day, uh, but I think now we have to really, really be watching individual stocks. That's where, as far as the next investment opportunity is going to be in this current environment of low implied volatility, until we see some implied volatility, probably going to be staying away from some of these larger index products, only because 
um, they're just not paying for the type of risk that you're taking on when you're positioning in them right now. So uh, join us tomorrow morning, 8.30 Eastern Time. I will be taking a look at all the action that has been happening in Asia overnight. Uh, Japan had an off-the-charts move overnight last night. They were up 2.4%. That's the biggest move since 2015. Let's see if we see continuation in the Japanese markets, challenges in the Chinese markets. So join us and learn more about what's going on there and how that could impact your portfolio. Only here at MarketStream.Live. See you then.